33 countries attended the U.S. ceremony to relocate its embassy to Jerusalem. Among those were 11 African countries, according to Israel's foreign ministry. The ceremony was held on Monday and came about five months after Trump made the decision to move the embassy. The United Nations and several U.S. allies condemned the decision. The African countries were Angola, Cameroon, Congo Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Côte d'Ivoire, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Rwanda, South Sudan and Zambia. Of the group, Rwanda, Cameroon and South Sudan abstained in the December 2017 vote, while the remaining nine voted against the U.S. In interestingly, the only African country that voted along with the resolution, Togo, was absent at the ceremony. Well, for more on this, we are joined by CGTN's Stephanie Freed. She's in Tel Aviv. And Adel El Mahruhi, who is on the Gaza side of the Gaza-Israel border. Uh, first over to you, uh, Stephanie. How was Jerusalem on Tuesday? Um, well, it was quiet. Um and it was quiet actually we were there on monday as well the day of the embassy opening quiet and then we went over to the west bank uh the palestinian west bank for this nakba day the catastrophe day that you were talking about karen um there there was a little bit more happening certainly people are protesting they were protesting um the palestinian president mahmoud abbas called for three days of mourning for those who were killed in gaza um, and you could you could feel the effects. I've been to numerous Nakba protests. Um, the expectation was because this was the 70th uh, year. This is the 70th Nakba, um, and also with everything that's happening right now with Gaza and Israel, um, that the turnout would be tremendous. But it wasn't. People are subdued, and there's a sense that possibly people are in shock. Um, as, the, as this situation snowballs and escalates, and certainly, as you said as well, Karen, condemnations are starting to pour in, um, as well as political shifts and changes, um, namely now Turkey and Israel uh, have essentially all but cut off diplomatic ties. Turkey kicked out Israel's uh, ambassador and Israel has just said to the consul general of Turkey to Israel leave so uh, things are moving very rapidly with the situation you said so many humanitarian groups and organizations are now crying out against what's happening a lot of criticism toward Israel for using live fire on unarmed protesters um, but back to your original question Jerusalem actually was fairly quiet on Tuesday, Karen. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll return to you in a moment, Stephanie. Over to you, Adel. There were burials today in Gaza, including that of an eight-month-old baby. How would you describe the mood right now? It is extremely disappointment. There is rage among the Gazans in the street. And moreover, there is shock. This is what is dominating, actually. Um, Today in the afternoon, dozens of funerals have taken away from several mosques of those killed on Monday. Um, the city is in extreme shock and mainly because the numbers uh, are beyond any expectation. And during the past seven weeks where the protests have been going on on a weekly basis, the number were way less. The accumulation actually of all seven weeks is still less than the casualties we've seen on Monday. So there is shock um, toward what happened. Um, for the eight-month baby, it is common for Palestinians to take their children and go to the border to let their children watch the protest. Most of them keep their family safe, especially when it comes to infants. They keep them at a safe distance, but still because of the massive numbers of protesters that were there on the Gazan side of the border uh, on Monday, um, when Israel tried to respond to this first to um, shoot at uh, protesters or um, fire tear gas, of course, it does not really uh, distinguish um, what exactly or precisely can happen because the numbers were numerous. People, few people actually today on Tuesday went and took uh, the border side from Gaza. They continued 
the same attempts but on, on much uh, smaller scale. Uh, we've seen um, tires being torched once again, uh, kites trying to um, torch um, uh, Israeli um, agricultural land on the other side as well. So there has been sim the similar actions were going but on a very, very smaller level. And from these few who have been there on the borders to them, continuing coming every day to the border and showing this resistance is quite crucial. And they say that they want to continue that. And this was actually a message that has happened by Ismail Haneya, um, the leader of Hamas, who suddenly appeared at uh, the border on the eastern side from Gaza today um, to give support to those few uh, who continued the calls of the protests. Okay, Adele, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll return to you in a moment. Uh, Stephanie, back to you. You were mentioning that diplomatic ties are being cut off. There are a number of nations which are not moving their embassies to Jerusalem. What is the Israeli government saying about their position? Uh, well, the Israeli government, in terms of the entire Jerusalem recognition, embassies moving there, uh, Guatemala intends to open their embassy. They're going to put it in Jerusalem as of Wednesday. Um, the Israeli government is quite pleased uh, with all of the, what has transpired in terms of the opening the U.S. embassy, recognition of Jerusalem as uh, Israel's capital. Um, and so the condemnation uh, Israel is more or less taking a step back from. And certainly insofar as Gaza and the protests go as well, Israel is saying, well, this is, this is Hamas's fault. This isn't on us. Hamas is pushing the people to go to the, uh, the separation fence between the two sides, uh, using people as human shields. But back to the question about Jerusalem and moving embassies there, um, there's been criticism, certainly, within Israeli society about the fact that uh, you had the politicians and the American uh, delegates uh, happy, shiny, smiling, at the same time people were being killed uh, it, along the Gaza separation fence between Gaza and Israel. There's been criticism there. At the same time, a poll that came out today that I was reading shows that even secular Israelis um, are very much in favor of that declaration of Jerusalem as Israel's capital and uh, also are in favor of Donald Trump, which is a bit surprising. And I do note secular because Jerusalem is a city very, it's a holy city to many um, and associated with uh, three monotheistic religions. So to find that secular Israelis came out in favor of this declaration is a bit of a surprise. Okay, Karen. thank you for that, Stephanie. Uh, back to you, Adele. Are we expecting more violence in the days to come as the Palestinians protest this move? The calls for protests to continue are still on. Um, as I told you earlier, Ismail Haneya, the leader of Hamas, when he was at the border, he, this is in itself a very um, so clear sign that he wants these protesters to feel supported. Um, he gave a short speech um, to those who were attending at uh, the border. He told them that there are three main demands for the Palestinians and three key words, state, Jerusalem, and return. Um, he's referring to the three main demands that have been on the table for a very long time to have an independent, fully independent Palestinian state, Jerusalem as a capital, and a right for return to the Palestinians uh, all over the world to come back to their land. Um, and he said that unless these demands are met, the resistance will continue, the protests will continue, and the march of return, which is uh, what they have dubbed the recent uh, wave of uh, protest uh, will also continue. Okay, thank you very much for that update. That was uh, Adel El Marouhi there on the Gaza side of the Gaza Israeli border, and uh, Stephanie Freed earlier for us also in Tel Aviv.